Well, hello, Bob Dendry here, and welcome back to City Skylines, where we are building the wonderful town of Lorikeet Valley. So, last week we built a little bit of this CBD up, and also laid down some grid for some further development. And as well as that, we actually unlocked railways, which was something I've been really looking forward to. Um, I love doing railway builds with lots of, you know, details and railway yards and props and stuff like that so i'm keen to to jump in and give that a red hot go um just before we begin i just want to give a huge shout out to my buy me a coffee supporters you can see their details in the lower third right now if you're interested in what uh we offer through buy me a coffee have a look at the link in the description but enough of that so just before we start building our railway, I just want to talk about what I want to do and also need to lay down a little bit more commercial to deal with our current demand. So in terms of the railway build, I think I'm going to split that over a few episodes. I have actually had some sort of sandboxing uh, through the week to try and work out how I do it. And it's going to be a very, very long build. Um, I think if we're just going to be... Um, doing railway so I think I'm going to focus on building the city up a little bit the city does need some expansion as you can see from our RCI indicators so we'll start off with that we'll do a bit of uh, railway building and then we'll see where we're at towards the end of the episode in terms of what we need to do next so if you recall last episode we laid down some gridding here for a potential uh, future tourist area so we're gonna start by working on that so I've laid down a new district, and we're going to call this um, Riverside. And we're going to place down the commercial uh, leisure specialization on this. And I think what we're going to do right on the river, we're going to have some uh, lower density commercial sort of around here. And then as we back off, we'll add some higher density stuff as well. And probably need a maybe another park or two as well, just so we can have some uh, some other ledger type stuff. And I think uh, Botanic Gardens never fails to you know um, impress people with the sort of cool building and all of that. So I think that works out well. I am just going to quickly move this with Move It just so it centers on our uh, pedestrian paths through here. But I think that's good. I think we're all covered off with, yeah, perfect. So we're all covered off with our water and we should join up with power pretty quickly if we're not already. So that will be fine. So we'll just leave that to develop for a little bit. And now I want to have a look at our railway corridor, which if you recall, we reserved in the last episode. Now, what I think I want to do here is build sort of a sunken, but not buried railway sort of through this section. So we've got um, so we can still see our trains and we can still, you know, it still looks cool, but we'll have uh, easier connections across the railway to the other side of what will probably still be a fairly built up area of our CBD. And just before we do that, we need to lay down a nice level pad for us to build that on, because as you can see, our, um, you know, our topography is a little bit challenging in this area. So I think... Probably what I'm going to be wanting to doing is, probably what I'm going to want to be doing is to sort of level out on this thick line here. And that should give us a fair amount of room to play with. And probably just feather out towards sort of the rest of our CBD as well. Next, I'm going to place a um, sort of a somewhat diagonal road just across this pad. And if we look at our reserved area, perfect, it's right in the middle there. Okay, so what we're going to be looking to do is uh, we're going to look to use a sunken station here. Um, so this is the Sotunda sunken station. And I think what we're going to be running with is um, we're going to be using wires with uh, gravel and concrete. Uh, 
So if we have a look, looks nice. It's a little bit ugly at the moment, but that will fix up pretty quickly. Um, so I, I'm not sure I mentioned before, we'll be using the Railway 2 pack primarily in this build. Um, I think it's only fairly recently come out. I've used the Railway 1 pack a little bit, but this is my first time using the, the sequel, I guess. And um, yeah, I, I just think it's really cool. Like you look at stuff like the um, the sort of extra detail on stuff like the sleepers and the ballast. So I think it is really nice. And thusly, that's what we'll be using. Next, I just want to lay down a little bit of um, just extra track coming in and out of this station, just so we can start to work with um, you know, what we've got here. Okay, also what I need to do, which I <laughs> have forgotten to do, we need to switch off our day and night cycle so I can see what I'm doing and so you can see what I'm doing more importantly as well. Okay, so if we have a look here, I think this is a pretty cool, um, pretty cool station. It sort of fits in with the whole sunken thing that we're trying to do here. And essentially what I think I'm going to do is just to sort of gradually make our way back down to sort of a decent bridge height and then from there obviously make our way across the river. Uh, let's just pause that for a second. <laughs> um, okay, I, I did place that down as a bridge but apparently this doesn't support bridges. I know most of the Railway 2 pack doesn't actually have bridges on the actual tracks you need to select bridges, but I thought it would at least give us a little sort of hovering railway piece so we could uh, uh, work with it. <laughs> but no, it did not. Um, but that is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll have a look at some of the bridges we've got here that we can use. And we've just got a, a couple at the moment, it looks like. So I just want to see how this truss bridge looks. Oops. It's a very large bridge, isn't it? I don't think that will quite work for us. <laughs> so we might just go with a, just sort of a plate girder bridge, I think, in this sort of area. I think that, yeah, that's a little bit better. And... Probably what we're going to want to do is probably use the same bridge to make our way over the uh, motorway here and onto our main line. All right, let's have a look and see how we look. Yeah, it could do with a bit of work, but um, yeah. Oh no, that's way too low actually. We can see how our... <laughs> um, actually no, what we're going to do, rather than raise our road up, uh, sorry, raise our railway up, we're going to lower our road. I think that makes a lot more sense. And I'm just going to use the network multi-tool. Am I going to use the network multi-tool? Oh, hang on. I'm using the wrong uh, tool. <laughs> to, uh... Just to fix up these, uh... Grades and make them a little bit nicer. No. I'm not having a good day. <laughs> That's for certain. Okay, um, let's try that again. Okay, that's a little bit better. 2% grid, so it will, um, it's not too bad. 
and then it just sort of makes its way meanders over to the other side all right next what I want to do is uh, I just want to smooth out the grade going up to our station 8% that's still quite a decent grade there um, but I think it'll still be fine I think it'll still work fine um, and now we can start making our way over towards the uh, other side of the river so I'm just going to grab the track we've been using here and we're just going to take a, a nice sort of round approach here as well And we're going to sort of pull it back up to, you know, um, probably about level with where our other bridgehead begins. Okay, that's good. And we'll go for our plate girder bridge again. What I find interesting is with this bridge or with these bridges, you can't actually um, select what your katanaries look like. So we'll actually need to manually add those in later, because otherwise it looks a bit silly. Um, you know, because you don't have any. You've just got the wires sort of hanging there by themselves. <laughs> um, we also don't want this to be a sort of ballistic shaped bridge, so we'll just lower it down as well. That's still that's still high enough, I think. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is we will set it to the object height of our other bridgehead. That makes a little bit more sense. Okay, we can also unpause. I don't know how long I've had it paused for, <laughs> but pausing isn't really required. Um, next, we'll use our once again use our good old network multi tool. and smooth out that uh, that grade to about a 1.7 so that's pretty decent and we'll continue making our way across all right this looks ridiculous right now <laughs> but um, I am actually going to... Uh, use move it to square this away and get it sort of um, more in line with the how the road looks. First of all, once again, use our lovely slope tool, and we're just gonna try and sort of flatten it out a bit more. In fact, uh, I think we can just do this. Maybe not. Maybe we can't do that. Does <laughs> that look silly in itself? But I think it'll be a lot easier to work with. Okay, now let's use our network multi tool. and let's have a look and see how the slopes look so they're I mean largely pretty decent apparently this is oh yeah that is actually quite a slope there <laughs> you are right <laughs> but other than that um, it looks yeah pretty reasonable So now that that's done, um, or this this section of the rail is done anyway, um, we need to go back and look at our residential because our numbers, as you can see, we have massive demand for residential. It is shooting up through the roof. So we need to probably look at that before too long. Now what I want to do is just to set up a, a little bit of a, uh, probably a key wall along here. Um, just so we've got that height over the rail line so we can use, um, you know, bridges and stuff like that to, to get over the top of it. And 
And we're just going to use the standard key wall at the moment. I think there is, there's some better ones on the, um, on the workshop, but I don't have those installed right now. So we're going to, you know, work with what we've got, I suppose. <laughs> And I think what we're going to do here is it probably um, in the end here, it's going to just sort of shrink down to nothing or almost nothing. And then I wonder if we can use the multi-tool here, in fact. Ah, we can. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay. So I think what I want to do here is, um, if we can, need to remove buildings, if we can line up the key right up against our sort of wall here, which uh, looks like it's lining up quite well there, and sort of keep it that sort of distance um, from, from the railway, and try and keep it a similar height as well. What we can do as well, I believe, I think we can use our node controller here, right? We can. And we can set these to slopes so we don't have these odd um, sort of flat bits at each node. I think you're already sloped, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it's a nice little start. And from there, what we can do as well, we can use our landscape tools to um, sort of feather this train out a little bit as well. We don't want to change it too much because um, otherwise we're going to have, obviously, a massive cliff here or something like that. But we've just been able to feather it out just a little bit. And I think it largely fits in pretty well. I just want to see... I don't know if we'll be able to do it, but I just want to see if we can push back. No, that's not what I want to do anyway. <laughs> I was using the wrong tool. I just want to see if we can push back these little ugly bits here. Um, looks like we can do a little tiny bit, but not a massive amount. I don't think it looks too bad anyway. Okay. So let's get some more grid down then. So this is going to change up our grid a little bit, but not too much. It's just sort of slightly out of kilter with what we've already got set up. And what I'm going to do is set the height of all of our nodes to match or match near enough to our key walls and as auto save just momentarily breaks the game. Okay, cool. Let's see if we can line this up pretty perfectly. Switch off our road guidelines here. Just want to see if we can get like a nice 180. Let's try just angle. Perfect. Okay. So if we continue this on and then connect that, that is that a lovely 180 there? Excellent. Okay. And I think this junction here will be a little bit problematic. I think what I might do instead... So we'll connect this one up. And I might get a little... Um, just a little lane or something like that. And just have that sort of curving around. But probably not curving around that much. 
<laughs> and just joining up. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, we'll get some water pipes down. And we're just going to lay down a whole heap of uh, residential. Of course, once we've got our... Uh, paths down, which I almost forgot about there. That's yeah, not what we wanted to do at all, though. <laughs> Okay, while we've been spending all that time on uh, <laughs> building up this area, our residential demand has gone right down, but um, that should be still fine. I just want to lay out probably um, a few targeted nodes just to start with, um, so we can link up power to our new station. Yeah, it's probably a good place to put a little park or something like that in as well. Got enough dog parks. So we're not going to stick another one of those down. Ah, it's like a perfect fit there, that little small park. So hopefully we start to see some development in this sort of corridor here, which will get our uh, train station into operation. Fingers crossed anyway. Um, I just want to as well select the intercity trains that I want using the service vehicle selector mod. Um, so I'm going to use the ride velocity um, cars so we don't get like generic trains. They'll just be the some of the nice ride cars that I like. Okay and I think probably we can do some beautification in this area while we're over here you know. So I think it would make sense to have some trees sort of along along, uh, along this area. Oh, sorry, uh, my uh, lost my voice for a second there. <laughs> and this will give, uh, I guess, the residents in these apartments. It probably won't do too much, but it will give them a little bit of um, a little bit of protection from the uh, sound you'd be getting off these uh, trains, especially going downhill. They'd probably have their brakes on a lot of the time as well. And we'll just get a few extra sort of trees in this area as well. We also want to use Bob. Alt B. I keep forgetting. Okay, so let's have a look. Oops. All right, so we've got a, a nice little variety of Australian trees in there now. Excellent. It is exactly what I like to see. Still don't have any development here, <laughs> but we'll just leave that leave that to think about its life for a second there, and we'll move back over here. So I think what we're going to do is we'll have a station for Birdsong, um, which will be on the other side of uh, Birdsong Boulevard from the suburb itself. We'll probably run that as a four-track station at the moment. Um, it will be sort of a major-ish station, at least at the moment, until we uh, potentially build like a big major um, like terminus or something like that. And I really like uh, Joke's four-track station. This one's by Polygon. Um, I did actually want to use the Green Sunken Station originally over at uh, Lorini, but um, it didn't quite work correctly with the Railway Replacer. So instead we'll use the four track station here instead. And once again, I've forgotten to use the uh, railway replacer. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Perfect, looks good. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if I mentioned it. I don't think I did. Um, I've also sort of switched out the buffers with um, New South Wales style buffers, and I'm also using New South Wales um, gantries as well. Though they're not quite lining up with the uh, existing um, wires, so I might need to have a look um, at Workshop and see if there's a, a specific um, wires set that I need to use with these New South Wales style overhead um, katanery. All right, but look, what we're going to do from here, we're going to run these tracks into the station. What I really like about the railway too is that it has um, these sort of nodeless junctions where the like the actual points look really nice compared to what the uh, the standard ones do. And as well as that, what we're going to do is add in another junction, which is actually going to bypass the station altogether. And just pass sort of behind it there. So this uh, little bypass here, that's going to be for our freight network. Um, which we're not going to be building in this episode, but we want to sort of, you know, um, put the adequate planning in place so that we don't have any issues down the line with it. Excellent, I think that looks really good. Uh, I think we might just need to slightly adjust some of our heights here, just so everything's nice and flat. Just use a little bit of network multi-tool goodness here. up that uh three percent drop we had right there okay alrighty so what we're gonna do here um I might set up a quick line just so we can get some uh, public transport flowing through here now I'm just gonna slightly adjust how this looks because <laughs> sometimes I'm a bit obsessed Okay, okay, that looks nice. Um, yeah, so I'm going to quickly set up a transit line from just running between these two stations. I think what I'm actually going to do is switch off intercity here. Um, and yeah, allow it to do this one. Five car velocities we'll run with. And yes, do we have... Yes, we do. And we ooh, just need to expand that... Uh, neighborhood as well but we have power here which is excellent news okay so what I'm gonna do I'll set up a, a line here um, that will be just a you know a simple shuttle service quickly pop on pause there and for our vehicle types I think we're going to use the talent uh, three yeah, probably just a three car set at the moment and we'll just pop it down to five percent which should force it to only use one vehicle i think that's all we need at the moment i don't expect massive um, massive amounts of traffic on this line if any Okay, so now that we've got our uh, line set up and the station put down, what we're going to look to do is develop a little bit of a um, depot and some yards for our passenger network. So this will be probably where we'll store like rail cars, stuff like that. And we may even set up this station to um, look a, a little bit sort of um, as though you'd expect a um, terminating line to look like as well. So I think what I'm going to see if we can do is just slot in a little, um, just a single track here um, where we can 
sort of have a, a spare rail car or something like that sitting how like if we were to have a um like a standby crew or something like that so i just want to see if we can get that running first of all so if we turn off some of our, our uh, some of our snapping and road guidelines as well we should be able to get a decent length little siding in here which we can possibly join up here mm, I think that'll work <laughs> once it's not uh, a meter out of the air Okay, that works, I think. And I wonder if we can just drop this down just a little bit. Or if that will... No. Are these at the same height? Huh. Okay. Um, I might just use our... Smoothify tool and see if... Uh, that fixes any of the strange stuff we've got happening here. Not really. <laughs> Still got a bit of weird stuff happening here, but that is all right. Um, we probably just have to deal with that, I think. There's no smoothifying happening here. That's all right. Um, so yeah, what this uh, this little sort of node gives us, or this little segment gives us, is this would be a place where um, vehicles that were sort of on standby in case there was like a breakdown or a, a driver got sick perhaps or something like that, um, they could potentially sit in this sort of area um, while they awaited, you know, um, orders or whatever to go out onto the network to help out. So these, we're, we're going to use the Talent 2 props as well, or Talent 3 I should say. Not Talent 2 or 4. <laughs> um, and maybe? What am I, what am I missing out on here? Okay, there we go. Um, these are actually very difficult to place. Um, because they're uh, essentially um, articulated. So if we just pause here, if we pause here, um, and we just have a look there, you can see that they're actually sharing a bogey. So it's difficult to get them lined up perfectly, but I'm gonna give it a red hot go, and um, we'll have a look at the results. As you can probably see, I'm using the um, uh, procedural objects mod to place these. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is I find that it gives you a lot more precision in terms of exactly how you place them compared to just placing them down as regular props. Um, so no, yeah, no other reason other than that. So swing that around. Change it to a procedural object.
as I said, it's not perfect, but um, I think it, it looks really cool and adds a little bit extra um, authenticity or, or whatever you want to call it to um, the game. I just want to quickly paint a little bit extra gravel as well. Probably not that much. Excellent, okay. So that I think will be the first part of this build. We've actually gone through quite a bit this uh, this episode so far. So we do have our new um, train station all up and running. I would say we've probably gotten zero passengers at this point actually. Saying that, I've just seen quite a few people get off this train and uh, go across into the city. So that's actually really good. Um, last thing I probably want to do is just set up a, a bus route as well. We probably will want to have a metro here eventually, but I think a temporary sort of bus route is going to be fine. And we're just going to basically give people the opportunity to be able to hop on a bus, um, you know, right outside the station. And from there, just head across to um, sort of our what will be our main transfer point over here. And then just make their way back to the station. So nice, easy, quick bus route. Um, let's have a look and see what options we have here. I'm thinking just a smaller bus will probably be a uh, good option here. We're going to use the CityLink shuttle bus here, in fact. And I don't know how many it's going to put on. Let's have a look. Two, I think two is good. And that will just give our residents that little connection while we continue to develop our CBD. Alrighty, so the new train line, little short train line is up and running now and we have our nice little shuttle bus taking people from the train station right into town hall if that's where they're wanting to go but I think with that all done I think that's about it we're going to have time for today so we haven't done a heap of the work that I was hoping we'd do in terms of uh, getting some yards set up over here for our passenger services but um, I think it's been a nice nice little start so it's you know it is what it is we'll uh, continue to work on it over the next few episodes if you've enjoyed this sort of um, more detail oriented build please let me know in the comments and let me know if it's something you want me to do more of because I, I'm more than happy to work on these I really enjoy it um, it was just um, as, as I said I've not really played with um, without anything unlocked at the start previously so it's been a little bit of a challenge for me getting used to that but if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device the next time I post a video. All my social media links are in the description. Please get on there, like, subscribe, follow, do all of that sort of stuff. Um, I've also got the link to my Discord, so if you're wanting to engage in the conversation, please join the Discord server as well. Um, if you're wanting to provide some financial support to the channel, buy me a coffee is in the description, but enough about that. My name is Bob Dendry, this is City Skylines, I hope you've enjoyed this video and this episode of Lorikeet Valley, and until the next one, thanks so much for watching, and goodbye.